So that's it guys, the end. So guys, the queen of the fleet, Lily, the 240, is finally getting some love again, and we're finally into some engine work again. So, a few months ago, I noticed that I was getting pinging on this thing. So hopefully you could hear that. Sorry about the shaky camera, I'm not using my GoPro. But hopefully you could hear that. It's like when I first opened up the throttle, there's like a, a wasp. When I first opened up the throttle, there's like a... It's more pronounced obviously when I'm, when I'm pulling away because um, the engine goes more under load. There's wasps everywhere, look. For those that don't know, it's basically pre-ignition. The spark is happening too soon. The, the ignition timing, it's too advanced. Uh, there's a few things that can cause it, but the main thing is that it's really, really bad for the engine. That rattle that you can hear is, is just murder on the engine. So I tried to rotate the distributor slightly to adjust the timing to see if it made any difference. And it was a total disaster. Here's what happened. Okay, so let's pull off the distributor cap. So something I've noticed which is quite interesting. You guys see how to the left of the, the bolt, the washer, there's kind of like a clearer area where obviously at some stage, that's where the distributor was set to, which is exactly where we need to turn it. We need to turn the, dis the distributor clockwise to um, retard the ignition because it's at the moment it's too far advanced because it's pinging, which means it's too far turned anti-clockwise, which is exactly what that suggests as well. Well, let's see if it's loose for one thing. Maybe that's the issue. It's not loose um, but yeah I think someone's adjusted it haven't they for some reason and now it's too far advanced so if we put it back to where it was so I'm just making a little sort of indentation also makes you wonder as well why it was adjusted there must have been a reason for it you know so I wonder if there's some other issues totally solid So there has been a development. Oops. I need this car to get home in. 
otherwise I'm on the bus. And we don't like that, do we? So yeah guys, those two or three chunks that I broke off the distributor that's still on the car now, they're in the glove box. The only thing that's keeping the distributor in and from turning is the fact that it's seized. It's been like that now for a couple of months. I wasn't able to find a distributor and then one of my friends came through for me big time. Some of you will probably know him actually. Ahoy there you two! Alrighty, well here we are, we made it. Take somebody to rob the antenna off that. Whoa, there's a lot of cables in here. <laughs> Holy crap. I don't think these, these are speedometer cables. I doubt they're 240 speedometer cables because I don't know why we would have half this many. <laughs> well. All right, just gotta load it up. About to hit the road. Look at that. I mean, you can see it on Google Maps satellite view. If you look at one of the cameras up there down here, it's been sitting here a while. You know, some dude who's been taking this rod every day for 10 years is gonna be like, hey, that old Volvo's gone. So here we go, guys. This is it. All the way from America. The bearded wrencher has well and truly saved the day. So the first thing I'm going to do is get number one piston to top dead centre. Plugs are looking healthy. So it's 24mm socket for the crank pulley bolt. I'm just going to rotate the engine. Oh, it's in gear. It's risky doing this here because if, if I break something and I can't drive the car, I can't put it inside the garage because the 740 is already in there. And I can't get home. And of course I can't take the distributor off the 740 because it's a head mounted distributor. It's like the one thing that's different on these cars. Everything else is exactly the same because they're both LH2.2. So when the screwdriver is at its highest point, and then just before it starts to go down again, we know we're at top dead centre. So that also lines up our timing marks as well. Yes, then we can see where our rotor arm is as well. 188, it's on cylinder number four there. As long as we put it back in the same position, we'd be fine. In the name of doing things properly, let's go full rotation on the crank. All right, so that's top dead center now on the compression stroke. Again, if we look at our cap, where the rotor arm is pointing to, be this one here, and that one goes off to our number one cylinder. Of course, you need a timing light to do it properly, but you know, at least if I eyeball it for now, I know, okay, that's the position it should be in. Let's see if I can actually remove this thing for now. Okay, now it's turning at least. That's something, isn't it? Let me get a bit more penetrant in there. To be honest, the fun hasn't even started. Like, for example, Bearded Wrencher, the one that he removed. It's a shame he didn't film it. But he said he couldn't get it out. It would rotate. He could adjust it, but you couldn't pull it out. So this isn't even the hard part yet. Like, just getting it to the point where it will actually rotate. So I don't know, but I'm going to keep turning it. Because he said his trick was to keep turning it. And then eventually... Oh, it's free. We did it. 33 years it was in this car for, so, you know, I doubt it was ever removed, so. And then there's the gear in there. That's the gear that drives it. That gear drives that gear. So I just need to smooth off 
the edge a little bit. Where I was being a bit of an orangutan. But yeah, guys, I've got to say that penetrant PB blaster, uh, whatever you want to call it, I think that really saved the day to be honest. Soaking it down in that and in WD 40 occasionally, I think that's what made the difference. I think without that, it never would have come out. Not with how stuck it was. You can see where old bearded wrench had a go on it as well. He's had to give it a few whacks to get it to, to try and get it out. Funny, look at that. Germany as well, obviously being a Bosch part. Funny, isn't it? Made in Germany, German part, on an American car for, it was an 85, so what's that, 36 years? And then back to Germany in the end. So yeah, it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a clean up around these edges here. Just really make sure it's smooth and uh, yeah, get some oil on it and then get it in. I'm actually going to put quite a bit more grease on than that. There's no point being shy with it, is there? Something like that. Just putting it back where it was. Because obviously it's got a slot into the, those teeth have got a slot together. And then I'm trying to get the distributor in the position it was originally. That's it. That's exactly where it was. So yeah, you know, just for an eyeball job. The teeth are quite big on the distributor and the, the gear that drives it. So it's very much like it wants to go here where my finger is or here or over here. You know, it's not like fine teeth where you can just get it slightly off. You know, it's, it's quite pronounced. Um, so given that our distributor was about there-ish sort of, you can see there at the back, roughly in that position, it was actually about there because I had it almost half halfway along the adjustment and then our rotor arm was pointing pretty much exactly between this pin and, and this pin in the middle between these two pins so i know that i'm i'm sort of basically near that's pretty much where i want to be and then it's just a case then of just like slightly tweaking it just to dial it in of course the proper way to do it is with the timing light you're not going to get the proper timing without so guys i'll just flash back to the original clip where we originally saw how the distributor was set so before originally it would have been over here as it obviously has been on this distributor ours was about there which had advanced it more and that's why we were probably getting the ping that we're getting so i'm quite happy to put it to where it was here there and say that that's probably going to be where it needs to be. So we could do it until it pings, advance it counterclockwise until it pings slightly, and then we could retard it until it doesn't ping anymore. That's normally how you can eyeball it or, or you know, do it by ear. So there we go, I turned it off because I have to shout over the piston slab, so I thought it's better if I just turn it off. So yeah, guys, I'm so over the moon, I'm so happy now, she's running good, without any ping. So that's it guys, the end, but I'm not worried because I've got two old Volvo so I think with them I'm gonna survive it whatever it is